Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers Podcast. So what have I been up to? So the last couple of days, um, I kind of decided to make myself um, uh, a kind of a little draw. So this little draw is specifically to go inside a blanket chest that I made. I think I made it maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, some somewhere that time. And it's actually waited that long <laughs> for the... Um, for the little draw to go in and, th- and this is just a little slide draw um and it's it's solely just to to house me socks um i do actually use the chest of drawers just to put t-shirts um and shorts in so when i hide the socks in or put the socks in rather you know the the, they kind of just get lost amongst all the t-shirts and everything else. Yeah, so it's not too difficult to differentiate between shorts and a t-shirt, but then when you've got to start rummaging around for socks, um, you know, it's, it's kind of starting to get really annoying. So eventually after a year and a half, two years, however long <laughs> it's took us, I have actually started making them there yeah, one. And this is actually. Yeah, uh, these were just some scraps that were lying around, um, off the doors I've been making. And it's, instead of just doing regular old, um, dovetails, I decided to do some Japanese, uh, inspired dovetails. Now, the actual chests that the drawers, the sliding drawers going into has actually got like Japanese, um, inspired dovetails and these are actually different to the ones I've been making today um the difference being that um on the on the chest itself the tail portion has actually got a little um triangle section cut out um there's a good chance I'm going to use uh, a picture of those dovetails uh, for the thumbnail. So if you're curious, check it out. There'll probably be a picture of that. And if you're curious to see the the style of the dovetail that I've been doing today for the draw, the sliding draw, there's obviously be uh, pictures of that on my Instagram and Facebook. And there'll be links to all of this um, in the description. So the the dovetails that I've been making for the chest, I thought it would be a good idea since I kind of want to do these when I get round to making my table or my roll on my um, kitchen island. It's probably I, I've I've spoken about this before. Um, it's been on my mind for quite some time. Uh, it's still a bit of a toss up between a table and a kitchen island although i am leaning more towards a kitchen island and if it is a kitchen island which it's probably going to be um i want to incorporate these style of dovetails um into the build so it's pretty much just going to be um the two corners the two end corners so Rather than practice the joints, which I don't like to do, um, if anyone's listened to us or, or read anything I've ever done, I don't like to just cut a joint for cutting a joint's sake, just for practice sake. If I'm going to cut a joint, uh, will I be for the first time or, or, or a practice? I, I like it to be usable in a sense that, that you're just not going to get the joint and put it in the fire pile or put it on a shelf just to show your progress. Uh, I'm a big believer in that you should use it. So hence the opportunity presented itself or all that I got, <laughs> or all that I got annoyed enough to make the draw. And I thought perfect opportunity, um, you know, kind of figure a few things out. Uh, what I will say is that, um, and I wrote this in my Instagram post, I've discovered that me three millimeter chisel has just totally disappeared to the fifth dimension, cannot find it. So what I will say, it's a good idea when you are, if you are going to do something like this, is to make sure you've got the tools to hand. Um, so I kind of, I'm not really happy with the middle section. 
yeah, which would be more, it's, it's kind of like a finger joint in the middle of a pin. Yeah, somebody actually described it on, I think it was my Instagram. They kind of asked the question and it was the question that asked the kind of described the joint perfectly. So it's pretty much dovetails where the pin section has actually got a finger joint in the middle of it. So it's, it's a re, you mightn't, you mightn't grasp it until you see the picture, but as soon as you see the picture and you hear, the, you hear the word like finger joint in the middle of the pin, you'll, you know, you'll totally get it. Um, that pin section, I'm, I'm not overly happy with it because it was too wide. So the reason it's too wide is because I can't find me three millimeter chisel. Um, and the next size up I had was a six millimeter quarter of an inch. Um, I do have a little, um, screwdriver that I've kind of, in emergencies, I'll, I'll sharpen it up and use it as a chisel basically, but it's not the best and it is, it is what I've just said. It's for emergencies. So I didn't really say that as an emergency. So. Um, I used the six millimeter. Ironically, <laughs> um, ironically, I had to use that little screwdriver chisel thing, what I've just been there talking about, to actually cut um, either side um, of the pins. And which section would that be? Would that be the tail section? In the tail section, in the tail board. So I did have to use it anyway. So. It's, it's still worked out okay, but it's like a word to the wise. If you're gonna kind of do, do stuff like this, make sure you've got the chisels to hand. I'd love to know where it is. I, I wanted a three millimeter chisel for so long, uh, and I just wouldn't buy one. And obviously, I might have got it from the Northeast Woodworking Show, um, a few years ago. Uh, you know, and I think I've used it about twice. Um, and for the life of us, I do not know where it is. So, what impressed me, so literally about 20 minutes ago, um, there was a, a post that popped up on my Instagram, and there's, two, there's only two pictures of it, um, I'm not overly sure if I've seen this before, um, but the first picture, it kind of looked like a, a regular mortise and tenon joint, and it looked like it actually had a a, a dowel going into the side of the cheek so it's not actually going through the tenons it's it, it's kind of nipping the cheek if you will so it kind of stops the the tenon from coming out that's what it looked like at first glance so on the second picture um it seems pretty much that it's it's from a chair so when you've when you've got the when you've got your legs and you've got your bottom rail here that goes that goes round the like connects all the four legs if you will um that's that's where the that's where the joint was um so basically what it said on the post was um it's the 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 two ends of the dowel so you've got one one dowel going in into the leg and then you've got the other dowel that's going into the same leg but it's, it's just ever so it's just ever so slightly touching the other dowel so basically if the glue fails it's it's a secondary measure it's it's quite uh, it's quite ingenious when you think about it um i'm gonna say that this is a this is as old as the hills and this is like a like a like a chair make as the kind of practice if you will i'm not overly sure if i've seen it before but it was quite impressive when i when i looked at it um you know it makes a lot of sense i don't think it's a long long term sort of fix you know but not that it's a fix anyway but you know it, it would kind of the chair would hold up um, a, a little bit longer here without the glue but yeah it's always quite clever but i'll leave a link to that if anyone wants to check that out okay so today i'm going to talk about um dovetail variations um just like three or four of them really um 
that's all I've ever cut three or four, so I can't really <laughs> go into really like the depths of it. Um, you know, cause there's a lot of, uh, crazy and wonderful Japanese style kind of dovetail slash finger joint. Uh, joints, you know, some of them are phenomenal, but, uh, I'm going to cover a few. Yeah, I'm going to give my thoughts on them. Um, you know, going over the, the strength and the, you know, whatever else. Um, you know, going to take some educated guesses because obviously I've never kind of tried any of this. Um, some of the stuff I've been talking about, you know, like tested it scientifically, if you will. Um, this is just basically me cutting the joint and getting feedback, you know, when I'm putting it together and when I'm cutting it and whatever else. So, um, if the podcast doesn't go on too long, I'm most likely yeah, I'm going to hire a few tips in, or at least how I do them. Um, a few little things that I kind of live by. Um, and I always tend to touch wood. I always tend to get, you know, quite reasonable results, uh, kind of using these little tips and whatnot. So variations, why, why do I get variations? Um, so I, I do believe, um, with dovetails, um, the variations do add strength in a sense. Um, you know, don't get us wrong. Um, you know, v- visually, uh, some of them can be absolutely stunning, you know, especially the Japanese, um, joints. Um, I'm not really fond of the, um, <laughs> I'm not really fond of the Western style. The Western style tends to be like a bit bland. Obviously, you've got the original dovetail. Everyone loves the original dovetail. Um, the next dovetail is kind of like a, the, the only one I can think of, the Western style one I can think of. Um, I'm not even a hundred percent sure it's actually Western, but that's tend to, that, this is tends to be where I, where I see it the most, um, from Western woodworkers. And that's like a hound's, uh, a hound's tooth dovetail and um I just don't like the look of them to to be honest. Um I more prefer the the Japanese air style dovetails for you know visually I, I think they're absolutely visually stunning. Um the one I've just recently done like literally today what the one I've been cutting today um visually that's Probably one of my favorite ones. The only, the only issue I have, which I've just talked about at the start of the podcast was that, um, the, the middle section, the, the middle section of the pin, uh, which is technically a, a finger joints inside of the pin, that's too thick. The, the proportion of the joints, it's just not right. But for the sake of, for the sake of practicing and the fact that it's for myself, um, I'm kind of, I'm not too, well, I actually, I am, I am follow cause it's, cause it's, it's eating at the back of my brain, but you get the idea. I kind, I kind of, you know, I, I've done it as a practice, but I'm also getting the, I'm also getting something out of it. I'm getting to use it as a draw. So, you know, visually, that is better for me. That's probably one of the better dovetails I've seen, you know, what I've cut. But I will say, when I actually come to do these on um, Kitchen Island, the dovetails are going to be way, way bigger and um, way, way wider. Obviously, the pins are going to be smaller and obviously the, you know, the centre and um, finger joint section is going to be, um, you know, smaller. Uh, obviously, in proportion, the joints themselves are going to be a lot bigger. I'm guessing um, the material I use to to, to actually make the, the whole kitchen island, it's probably going to be, oh, maybe two and a half, three inch, somewhere around there, I'm guessing. You know, so these are going to be big, massive, chunky <laughs> Japanese style dovetails. So, you know, it's going to take us a long time to do, but I think it's going to look, look absolutely stunning once it's done. And me personally, doing the style of dovetails, you know, that I've been doing today. Um, 
you know, I think it's going to absolutely sell it off. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's going to be not one in a million, but it's, it's not, this is going to be something you're not going to see every, every day, you know. Um, I haven't seen anybody do what I'm intending to do, although, you know, someone might have and someone might beat us to it, but either way, it's, it's going to look stunning. <clears throat> So there's there's that sort of aspect, uh, you know, visually, um, you know, because there is people that actually create furniture <clears throat> and they do incorporate the joinery, you know, into the design and, and sometimes it can work really well. So I did mention strength before and I'm a firm, firm, firm believer that different variations of joinery, whether it be on dovetails or, or whether it be on moats and tenant joints, certain variations can actually, you know, strengthen the joint up, you know, really dramatically. I think one of the, a good, a good example of this would be the, the actual, the last chest I built, which was the, the chest I've just been talking about a little earlier in the podcast. Um, and that, that that had like the that's like Japanese style um um dovetails. So with these ones the the um the tail section actually has um a triangle section cut out of it. So it kind of looks the tail section you could actually say it was kind of a fat Y shape. Or of the shape, you could say. So, I actually remember making um, these these joints. So you know, obviously, it's on a blanket chest, and you know, so there's multiple of these joints, and I remember just how strong they were. You know, like one at once, I got the joint together. You know, it was. You know, it was, <laughs> it was quite a, a task to get the joint together, but once I got the joint together, it was like, wow, how strong are these joints? So what I actually, <laughs> what I actually done just to, sh- just to, just to show you how strong the joint was. And this, this was obviously before it was glued up. Um, I had two, I had the two sides in. Um, so I had, I had a, I had the length for the fronts of the chest. I put the two, the two sides in. And rather than take it apart, because it was that sturdy and that stout, I actually just clamped the bottom, um, or the, or the front of the chest, uh, to my Roman workbench. So you basically got a U shape, um, and the two sides are unsupported and I actually cut all of the joints unsupported basically so all that was all that was keeping that still was the was the joints on e- on either on either corner so you can imagine the forces you know obviously you're using the saw you know you've got the vibration because it's you know it's it's actually coming up like off off the bench you know how, whatever it was you know was it like f- like 350 millimeters, something like that, you know. So I can remember I did not have a, I did not have an issue cutting them at all. They did not move at all. Um, really super, super strong joint. I mean, like the dovetail wise, that's probably one of the strongest, um, dovetails I, I've cut. Um, but you can kind of see how it works, it, you know. If you look at it, because you've got your regular, if you can imagine a regular dovetail, so, you know, you've got your pivot point at the corner where, you know, the, the inside corner meets, um, you know, and if you do this with a normal dovetail, you can, uh, you know, multiple dovetails, you can actually wig it. Don't get us wrong. It is a, it is a really strong joint still, but you can actually wiggle it. You can move it around a little bit, you know, and it'll, then that's kind of how you get it out. But what's different with the, um, with the one I've just been talking about, the Japanese style with, with the, with the triangle cut out is that you've got pressure going against the shoulder. 
and then you've got the triangle section of the of the tail portion cut out and that's actually you've got pressure against the um the triangle section of the pin section if that makes sense so kind of you've kind of got the effects of two shoulders kind of pushing in on each other and this is mega 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 strong um <laughs> the only issue with this is it took me forever to cut it there's so much cutting involved um you know with this joint um normally when i do a regular dovetail joint you know um I tend to do my tails, you know, a decent size, um, you know, quite big, uh, compared to what I see a lot of people do with them. Uh, and my pins, I actually do my pins a lot bigger than what other people do. Um, I find this, this to be quick. Uh, it's just quick and easy for me, you know, I can cut them really quickly. Uh, still a lot of dovetails in the joint, so it gives it the strength. Yeah, but, but that's what I like to do. But obviously when you're doing something, um, you know, with a, with a Japanese style, the, um, dove, uh, dovetails with a, with the diamonds cutting, uh, sorry, with the triangles cutting to the, the tails, it, it just takes a really, really long time. Obviously the more cuts you're doing, um, it, you know, you've, You've got to take your time more with it as well. Um, or at least I've got to, um, you know, you've got to double check things because the more, you know, you, pretty much in the pill, in the, in the pin section, you're kind of leaving like two lots of pins really, uh, when you look at it. Um, so yeah, you do have to be careful. Um, but, but as I said, you know, strength wise, if you ever want anything, you know, stupidly strong, I would highly recommend this style of uh, dovetail. Like I said before, this should be a thumbnail. I think I'm probably going to use this as the thumbnail, uh, the one I'm referring to now, uh, where with the, with the triangles cut into the tail portion. Um, it was pretty tricky to cut, I must admit. It's probably one of the harder joints I've cut. Um, but... It's kind of, it, it's, it's, it's the old, it's the same as the old adage. You kind of, you kind of get what you pay for. Well, with this, you kind of, it's the same sort of principle. You know, if you take your time, you know, when you're cutting lots and lots and lots and lots, but you will get a mega strong joint. So, yeah, as I said, highly recommended. Um, if you, you know, if you want something really strong, it's probably not the best. Um, it's probably not the best to be doing if you've only just started delving into dovetails. I'd probably recommend you get just the regular dovetails, get them down first before you start kind of moving on to something like this. As I said, it's one of the harder joints I've cut. So the... The dovetails I've been cutting today, so obviously these are not the ones with the, um, diamonds, di why do I keep on saying diamonds? I keep on saying diamonds. These aren't the ones with the, the triangles cut into the dovetails, uh, sorry, the tail portion. These have just got like a kind of a finger joints in, you know, in the pin section. So, are these as strong as the previous type of dovetail I've just been talking about? Definitely not. 110% no way as strong. Um, when I say strong, I am actually talking about the joint being at 90 degrees and actually trying to move the joints. Um, I wish I'd done some sort of, well, I did actually do a video. Um, I, but I, I wish I could do it. I wish I had some sort of uh, video where I could actually like, you know, have it clamped down and just be like pulling the thing around, you know, just to show you how, you know, strong those were. Having said that though, this joint, it is still pretty strong. Um, you know, in total, there's only two tails, you know, in each corner. So it is a little bit hard to compare it you know, with multiple joints that are actually done on the blanket chest. However, 
you haven't got the, the, the triangle section, which I totally believe made all the difference, um, you know, strength wise. Don't get us wrong, obviously, with this, with this being, you know, if I was to, uh, do this as a blanket chest or as I intend to do it as a kitchen island, there's still going to be lots of, um, friction. So that's something I actually didn't mention, um, about the, um, triangle style, if you will, the uh, Japanese dovetail. Um, obviously the more, the more faces that are connecting together, um, just seeing every, like per inch or every couple of inches, you know, you're creating friction, you know, it's just, it's common sense. The more friction or the more faces that are together, especially if the joints are good fits, you're creating more friction and there's less chance of it, like wanting to move basically when it's under pressure. So I think that's another, I think that's another, another reason why these can sometimes trump, um, the Western style, um, dovetails, um, you know, f for strength, same again, being at 90 degrees and trying to move it. Um, you could, you could argue the fact, um, that why not just cut more, um, more, more like dovetails, you know, more regular style dovetails and you're going to get the same, you know, you're going to get the same effects. Um, you possibly could argue that, but I don't think it's got any water where, where, when it comes, um, when it concerns the Japanese, say, uh, triangle style, you know, that it would just, until you've cut that, that type of style, you'll, you know, you, you, you can argue to the cows come home, but, it is stronger and I, and I obviously talked about why it was stronger because you've technically got two, two, two shoulder portions and you've got more friction. Um, you've got more, um, yeah, faces that are touching each other. So obviously it's creating more friction. So you, as I said, you probably could kind of argue the toss with the, with the one that I've been doing today, although. I still think it's better, <laughs> but uh, that's just me. Obviously, I, I I kind of prove this. You know, these are just educated guesses, and it's just my opinion. You know, it's just a little bit of fun me talking about stuff like this, and that's all it ever is. You know, just like my passion for woodwork, and and you know, I'm just trying to entertain people, and you know, get people's uh, brains thinking. You know, it's kind of what it's all about, isn't it? So I'm gonna quickly. Go over the hound's tooth. So, as I stated before, don't like the hound's tooth. Don't like the look of it. However, it is strong. It's really, really strong. And if you look, if you look at it, you'll understand why it's strong because you're getting, you've got two shoulder lines with this. So you've got the, you've got your regular dovetail shoulder line then you've got your hounds two shoulder line so if you can imagine a regular dovetail and you've kind of got a you've you've kind of got one pivot point you've got like you've got a shoulder one pivot point you add the hounds tooth and now you've got two you've got two pivot points and obviously uh, you know anyone knows a little bit about physics or whatever else it's like two pivot points you know, so close together that don't really do too well, you know, like working as a pivot point really. Um, you know, so that does give some resistance and it's, it's quite strong in that sense. You know, there obviously is a reason why this gets used on, um, workbenches. You know, that's, that's typically where I tend to say it. And obviously, you know, there is that reason, you know, because it's a super strong joints and that's why it's used. Um, you know, obviously the same again. Um, you couldn't, you couldn't a pin inside a, inside of a tail. So you're creating more friction. 
or you or, or you're creating more faces that creates more friction which gives it more strength and then you've also got the added strength of the extra shoulder lines as well so you know that is a really good joint for strength as well even though i don't like the way it looks but again that's my opinion and that's my preference you know i'd rather go for a japanese style because i just think they look prettier you know and obviously i think that's 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 part and parcel when you're making furniture you, you kind of do it especially if it's for yourself or it's or it's a design you've got kicking around inside of your head, you know, you kind of want to put it out. I mean, it's different if, you know, you're doing it for a, for a customer and the customer says, I want this, that, and the other. Yeah, you've kind of got to do what they say. Um, but if it's, if you're designing for yourself or, f- or even for a client, you know, you could actually put these in and see. But, uh, again, that's, that's kind of just my opinion. So I'm, just because the time's getting on a little bit, so um, I'm trying not to make these podcasts too long. I'm gonna go over a few things, a few, a few tips, um, what I do. Um, it may help some of you. It may not help some of you. You know, same as always. Um, take what's beneficial and leave the rest. So, um, tails or pins first. <laughs> This is, this is like so old, this, you know, tails or pins first. Now, normally, if I'm, if I'm doing a regular dovetail joints, I'll go tails first every single time. Now, what makes this easier for me is that because I normally do me pins quite large, I wouldn't say quite large, but I, I normally do them la- larger than what I typically see, see kicking around on Instagram or Facebook. Um, what I typically see is when someone cuts the dovetails or the pin section, they'll actually, the space between the tail and then the next tail is like maybe like a millimeter or two millimeters. When I do them, it's, it tends to be typically somewhere in the region of five, six millimeters, just to give you a reference. So they are, you know, you know, two and three times uh, bigger than what everyone else is doing, or at least what every, what I say everyone else doing. Um, I don't believe it's necessary to, to do them like that. I think it's more faff on for marking out. Um, I think I probably like them more if I'm doing regular dovetails. I probably like them more how I do them. But the same again, that is just, um, my preference. So when I do do them like this, um, you know, I'll, I'll sharpen a pencil. I'll basically, you know, remove some of the wood from the pencil to make it nice and thin and it'll actually get inside of the tails you know, in between the tails rather quite nicely and I'll get, you know, quite a good mark. So if I am doing something like that, I will always go tails first. So with the Japanese style, um, the one I've done today, I've went pins first. Um, and that's solely because it's just too awkward to get a pencil in. Um, you just basically can't get a pencil in. Now, you could argue and say, oh, well, why don't you know, use a knife? I'm not a fan of using knives, um, to mark dovetails out. I don't think, my, my personal opinion, I don't think it's the best way. I don't think it gives good results. That's just me though. Um, so when I have done pins first, there's been plenty of room to get me pencil in. So another thing, what I will say, if you are using an, a pencil, um, make sure it's, it's super sharp and pointy. Um, so basically if it's nice, sharp and pointy, it's going to get nice and crisp into the corners where you're marking out. If you don't use a sharp pencil, you're basically not going to get nice and crisp into the corners. If you don't get right into the corners, you're not getting a true mark. So when you actually cut the joints, 
it's going to be all gappy and <laughs> the whole point of you know kind of a motor uh, sorry a dovetail joint is for it to be nice 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 and tight and neat you know uh, you know if it's if it's not if it's not a tight, if it's a really slack joint, you're, de you're defeating the purpose. It's not going to, it's not going to be a strong joint. And then obviously it's not going to look, you know, good on the eyes, basically. So that's, that's one thing I have learned, you know, even if, even if you've got to sharpen that pencil, I sharpen my pencil with, um, with my mark and knife. So even if you've got to sharpen that pencil three, four times, what way you're marking out multiple dovetails, so be it. Taking that, taking those few seconds just to keep that point nice and pointy and sharp and thin, it, you know, it, it's gonna it's gonna be very beneficial for your for your end results. Use a good saw. Um, I have used other saws in the past. Um, not really intended for dovetailing or I have used dovetailing saws that aren't particularly great um, but if you're able to buy a decent saw or or, or acquire one somehow um, I have actually got a western dovetail saw it's, I, I think it's like a bit of a hybrid dovetail kind of tenon saw it does actually do a good job in all fairness um, you know, I, I can't slay the saw. It's, it, it is good. However, me being me and I, I do lean more towards the Japanese style uh, saws, which if anyone follows is the kind of know that I do. Um, and I find that I get really, really good results with that, uh, using, using my dedicated um, Japanese dovetail saw. The, the blade itself, I'm, I can't remember the the measurements, uh, the thickness of the blade, but it's it's really small. It's you know, it gives you such a fine curve. In fact, <laughs> in fact, it gives you so much of a fine curve. I actually str struggle to get me coping saw in. So he has an ax an actual another tip um, that that I that I have like basically had to do um, is that. When you, when you're cutting out, um, the waste material, actually cut the material in half first. So actually like cut a curve in the center of it. So if you're doing the pin section, uh, you're cutting the pin board, let's say, uh, where the dovetail's gonna go, actually cut it down, cut, cut the waste bang in the center. So all this does, this will allow you to get the comb saw in, um, and cut to the left and then cut to the right. And what this, what this does, this actually stops you from damaging, um, the pin section or, or, or the tail section. What I was finding because that me saw is so fine, me, Jap me Japanese, um, uh, dedicated dovetail saw is so fine is that when I was going, using the coping saw and I was trying to turn, you know, as you turn into the cut, because obviously it's going, you know, if you carried on the cut, you were just cutting to the shoulder. So you've actually got to turn the, the coping saw as you saw. What I was finding was the blade was actually damaging. It was, you know, if it wasn't, was damaging the, um, the tail or it was damaging the pin. Um, these weren't, you know, it wasn't like, like, bad bad but I could see it and I noticed it so that's why I started doing that so anyone that kind of you know uses a really fine Japanese saw it, they, they should kind of know what I'm talking about with this uh, you've got to be super careful because it is really easy to damage the sides and if you damage the sides it's the same again you know when you when you kind of got the joint together, you can see little things like that. Maybe I'm just a little bit over critical with things like that, but things like that kind of, they're annoying and they make, you know, they make me mind itch. So you know, I try to avoid them. So that's what I have actually started doing. So when I actually do use the coat and saw to remove the, um, the material, um, and this is my preferred method. You know, I don't know there's people that like to use a chisel. Um, when I first started 
um, cutting dovetails, I did actually use a chisel. I stopped using a chisel just because it takes too long. If you're cutting through 20 millimeters uh, of oak with a chisel and then you put it up against the coping saw, the coping saw is going to win every time. It, it's just so much quicker. Um, again, this is, this is my experience. This is my opinion. But what I will say when you are, when you are actually cutting, um, the, the material out with a comb, so if you choose to do that, try and get as close to your, to your shoulder line as possible. Um, also before, before you do that, what I like to do is when I've, when I've actually cut all me, um, all me, uh, me lines, I like to create a little knife, uh, a, a, a knife, not a knife wall, a, um, a, a little valley, a knife valley, a chisel valley, if you will. So me, you know, me chisel can sit, sit in quite nicely. Um, and it's, it's more, it's easier for it to register as well. What I've seen, um, and I've seen quite a lot of people do it, uh, when that actually cuts, um, when they cut the the waste material out, and then the starts, um, you know, they, they might have to pair it back or whatever. Um, the, they'll actually they don't struggle, but it takes them a lot longer for them to actually get the chisel into the into the knife the knife line. Um, whereas me, because I've took the time and I've I've put a valley. Uh, created a valley my chisel like literally i've just got to pull the chisel back and it registers itself um you know and i see a lot of people like kind of struggling not struggling that struggling might be the wrong word but i do see say people you know it, it again i want to use the word struggle but i can't really use it it's it's just taking them longer to do it than it is for me to do it and it just seems you know like like a lot more faffing about um so that's that's another thing what i like to do um i've kind of veered off a little bit here what i wanted to say but what i wanted to say when you actually are removing the material get as close to the line as possible all this does is that if you get it nice and close you've only got to take your chisel down the shoulder line once meaning that. If you say, let's just say, for argument's sake, we're well, three or four millimeters away from, from the shoulder line. You couldn't just take, you couldn't just take your shoulder, you couldn't just take your chisel and you couldn't put it into the, into the valley and then just start chiseling because you've got too much, you've got too much material still left on. And as what this is going to do, this is actually just going to push the chisel back into the knife wall and it's actually going to move the knife wall. The knife wall will move very slightly. Um, I haven't known it not to. It will ever so slightly move, you know, it might be like ridiculous, like point, like two of a millimetre, something like that. But if you've got like three or four millimetres away, like material still left on, between, you know, between the edge of it and between the knife hole. If you start kind of, <laughs> if you start, um, removing that material, that chisel is just going to be pushed in. And, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know how severe it would be, but I, you know, I, I would easy think maybe one, one and 1.5 millimeters. That doesn't sound a lot, but when you join sort of together, you're going to see it and you're going to notice it. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So, as I said, try and get as close as you can to the lines. And if you, once you get the knack of it and you start doing it on a regular basis, you, you, you you'll, you'll kind of, what's the word I'm looking for here? You'll appreciate you taking the time to get that close. And then you're only going to have to pass the chisel down once, you know, on that on that edge instead of doing it two or three times. Um, again, this is just what I do, you know, take it, take it or leave it. So last one for today is when, when I actually 
um, you know, cut out for me um, pins or I cut out for me tails. Um, I see a lot of people that actually will cut away from the line um, and then they pay it down with a chisel. I don't like to do this because I just think you're making double the work. Um, so what I tend to do, um, I go for perfect every time. Um, what, what do I mean by perfect? I don't mean, you know, like I set out to cut the joint. Well, obviously I do. <laughs> I set out to, you know, to cut the joints good and well, perfectly. You know, I might set out for it. But what I mean is that I, I try to cut the joint to make it fit first time. So I don't, I always leave the line on, but I'm, I'm touching the line. If, if that makes sense, the pencil line, let's say for argument, it's not going to be this thick, this thick, but let's just say that the, that the line is one, my pencil line is one millimeter in thickness. So my, my aim is to go up to that pencil line. Pretty much, I'm kissing, I'm kissing the pencil line when we saw, and I'll cut that pencil line. And after I've cut it, I still want that pencil line to be one millimeter. If that makes sense, that's kind of what I go for. What I see with all the people, the, for argument's sake, same again, the pencil line's one millimeter, which obviously we know it's not. It's one millimeter. But they'll leave maybe like somewhere in the region of one millimetre extra as well for them to pay it down with a chisel. And it's just like, I, I don't understand why people do that. And, and so, I'm not going to mention any names, but some of the names, I ha some of the like people that I have seen, these are kind of like really, like really, really good woodworkers, you know, and I don't know. It's just kind of doesn't, it doesn't seem logic for me. Um, I've been doing this technique for quite a while now, um, a few years now, and as what I find with it is that touch wood again. <laughs> I'm tempting fate, yeah. But what I find with it is that I never undercut. If anything, I've got to remove a little bit of material. Um, like from the pins, that's, that's what I typically like to do. If I have got to use, um, remove material, I remove it from the, the pin board because obviously it's just easier to get in. Um, but as I said, I tend to find that, you know, more often than not, I will get it, I will get the joint first time. Don't get us wrong. This has took a lot of time, a lot of practice. Um, but if I don't get it first time, I have to, I have to remove a little bit of material. It's never the other way around. It's never, I've removed, I've cut too much, if that makes sense. And I think that's something to do with using the pencil because even as thin as I get the pencil, you know, I talked about this a little bit earlier on, as thin as I get that point, as slender as that point is, you're still, it's still pulling you away from, like, you know, from the actual size. So you're not actually cutting the size. And I think, I think this method is what gives me the nice tight joints. Um, again, you know, I, I can't really prove that this is just like, <laughs> this is just kind of experiencing an educated guess, but I, that's, that's how I like it. And that's how I tend to get a nice, you know, tight joints. And that's what I think it is. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of how I do it. Same as before, you know, you know, if you like it, have a go of it, you know, take what you think's useful and discard the rest. Um, so I'm going to call it for the day. So again, thank you very much uh, for everyone that's taking the time to listen to comments um, on all of my social media and for my new followers and for my old followers. Um, very much appreciated. And until the next time, I'll speak to you guys later.